Hey everyone, it's Mark from Flight Sim School, and this is the second part of our flight from New York up to Boston in the TBM 850. And we'll be covering everything we need to know about managing our PT6 engine, including how to use 850 mode properly without over torquing it. And we'll look at a bunch of other little details along the way as well. So let's get airborne because we're going to have a lot of fun exploring all of that today. We're picking up right where we left off and we're holding just short of runway one in Teterboro. And I'm using my custom checklist today, which is available to members of the channel as well. If you're interested, it basically has the bare minimum items that you need to check for every single phase of flight rather than all of the little details like the built in checklist has. So it's a little bit easier to manage and it keeps you more focused on the important bits. Speaking of which, there are a few things we need to check. First, we want to make sure that our flaps are in the takeoff position. Next, we can look at our rudder trim, which at the moment is centered. And there is a little notch on there for where you're supposed to put it for takeoff. I actually prefer to just leave it centered and use my rudder pedals to keep the airplane on the center line, mostly because I find it easier than having to fiddle with the rudder trim as well once I'm airborne. But that just might be me and feel free to do it properly if you want to. The last big thing to make sure is our elevator trim, which should be near the bottom middle of the green takeoff range which is about where Steve-O seems to set it from what I could tell just looking through all of his videos. And I find that works pretty well for me too. Now, as we're getting ready to get a move on here, the thing that you're going to want to watch out for as you're applying power is the torque. Because although there is a torque limiter on the airplane to prevent it going over 100%, you're still supposed to set your takeoff power as if there were no limiter in place. If I were to just put the throttle all the way in, like in a piston airplane, the torque would get to 100% and then it'd stop because of the torque limiter. But because this engine can actually go beyond 100%, you actually won't know where you've set your throttle because the limiter is going to be hiding it. So that makes it super easy to accidentally over torque the engine. And we'll look at that in just a little bit in the climb out. So the way that I do takeoff with this plane, as well as any other turboprop for that matter, is I'll bring the throttle forward to about 75% so that the engine can spool up. And then at that point, I can continue to apply power slowly, but progressively until the torque maxes out at 100% as well. And it takes a little bit of practice to get this right, because you have to keep yourself on the center line, watch your airspeed as well as your torque. So there's a lot of things going on at once. Rotation speed in this plane is around 90 knots and you can slowly pitch up to about 7.5 degrees to start. And as soon as you have a little bit of altitude under you, you can bring the gear up. I usually wait a couple of seconds after that for everything to stabilize. And then at that point, I'll bring the flaps up as well. From there, I'll usually pitch the plane to maintain around 140 to 150 knots on the initial climb out. And since this plane is a ton of fun to hand fly, I'll usually fly the entire departure procedure myself. So with that in mind, I'll just meet you back in a couple of seconds for our cruise climb. We're going to get to the second part of the video in just a second. But if you have any questions about anything that we're looking at today, make sure to pop them in the comments. And while you're at it, please make sure to like the video and subscribe as well if you learn something useful for your next flight. All right, we are heading towards our first waypoint now, so we can do a couple more things at this point. For starters, I've already got the yaw damper on, so it handles our rudder for us while we're in flight. And I'll bring the autopilot on now too. And I like to put it into nav mode, obviously, to stay on course, but I'll use IAS mode for the climb to cruise just so that it maintains my target airspeed of 160 knots for me. The other thing that we can do is enable 850 mode at this point, which you can do as soon as you're established in the climb. I waited a little bit longer here just to make it a little bit simpler for the video. And what it's going to do is help our engine produce more torque, which will translate into either an increase in our climb rate or an increase in our airspeed with all of that extra energy that the engine develops. Basically what 850 mode does is it removes the torque limiter and it allows you to go beyond 100% on the torque 
but you have to be very careful because when there's no torque limiter, you can very easily exceed the maximum torque of the engine and either damage it or completely destroy it. That's why earlier I was saying that it's important to set the throttle properly to 100% because if you just have it pushed all the way in and you remove the torque limiter, you can accidentally exceed the engine's capabilities at that point because your thrust lever is set beyond the safe limits and that's where it can become a problem. The recommendation that I've seen is to reduce the throttle a little bit so it's not right up against the torque limiter and that way you can be sure you won't have any unwanted surprises when you go into 850 mode. So let's go do that now. First we'll set our power to about 95%. Now we can head over to the flaps lever and we'll push it into the 850 mode gate. And if we go back to our engine monitor now we can see that nothing's changed which makes sense. I'll increase the throttle slowly now so we can see what happens. We can see it's going to go right up to 100%. And as I'm applying throttle, now it's even going past 100%. And you can safely go all the way up to 121% if you want. Although I tend to use around 115% to not over abuse it, but also to give myself a little bit of leeway in case I make a mistake without thinking of it. That increase in torque above 100% has already increased our climb rate by almost 500 feet per minute because we're in airspeed hold at the moment at 160. So what I'll usually do at this point is actually increase my IIS speed to around 170 so that it keeps climbing at a pretty decent speed and we maintain still a really good climb rate. The other thing I've noticed is that if you push the engine near the max possible torque, the engine health does decrease faster, which isn't the end of the world because we're not paying for maintenance here, but it's always good to keep it in mind and I use it in moderation for that reason. Once you get to cruise, if you want to reduce the cabin noise, you can bring the blue prop lever back anywhere between 1800 and 1900 RPM. But you need to be careful when you do this because an RPM drop causes an increase in engine torque. And again, we have to be careful to avoid over torquing the engine past 121%, especially when we're in 850 mode because there's no limiter anymore. So what I'll do in this situation is again, I'll bring the power back a little bit temporarily. Let's say to around 100, 105% just to be safe. And as I bring the prop lever back to 1900 RPM, watch as the torque climbs. It's going to go from almost 105% to just about 110%. So if we had stayed at our previous power setting, where we were at like 115% torque, we would have been right up against that 121% limit on the engine. Now that I've got the RPM set where I want it though, I can push the power back in to get back to our 115% torque or so. And at that point, I'm pretty much set for the entirety of the cruise. If at any point you do happen to abuse the engine, a message is going to appear on the engine monitor at the bottom of the instrument panel. It'll tell you that it over torqued itself as well as by how much. And at that point, if you go back over to the Wedar radar menu and you check on your engine condition, it's likely that it's taken a little bit of a hit as well. There are a couple of other bits of information that are useful to know as well. The first block of pages focuses entirely on engine metrics and my default display is pretty much always the ITTNG page because it's the most useful one to have at engine start. The nav page is connected to the GPS and it shows you a bunch of info regarding your flight plan from the distance to your next waypoint, the distance to your destination, and you can also get your wind direction and speed here, which is always useful for choosing a cruise altitude as well as when it comes to landing. Although you can also get this information on the HSI as well, so it's a little bit redundant. I don't use the fuel page all that much, but if you think you're starting to be a little bit tight to make it to your destination, it's a great place to see how much range you have left and then decide if you're going to need to divert or not. But for the most part, hopefully you shouldn't need this information that much. 
The most useful screen on the air data page is the one that shows you your indicated airspeed right next to your true airspeed. And it's the only place that you'll find your Mach number as well in this plane. And that's what you should be using to measure your speed if you go above 28,000 feet, because it's gonna be a more accurate measure of speed that high up. And since the TBM can go up to 31,000 feet, it's definitely something you're going to need. The last thing I want to touch on for today is the concept of torque limited versus ITT limited as you continue to climb up into the higher flight levels because it's something that you'll definitely run into if you decide to fly to TBM up high, which it is definitely capable of doing. I recorded this next bit of video on a separate flight to show you what happens as you keep climbing up. Our torque is still in the green at 110%, but have a look at our ITT gauge. It's right near the top of its limit for normal flight, which is that red bar at 850 degrees Celsius. As we continue to climb, if I leave the torque where it is, the temps are gonna very soon exceed the safe limit. So at this point, what I'm actually gonna have to do is reduce power to stay below our max ITT. That means that we've now gone from being torque limited, where we were limited by how much torque the engine could actually develop, to being ITT limited, where we can only apply the amount of torque that's gonna keep us below our max turbine temperature. In some turboprops, you can also be ITT limited at takeoff, and I think there are some conditions where that could happen in the TBM 850 as well, although I haven't seen it be a problem myself. So it's not a bad idea to keep an eye on your ITT as you set your takeoff power as well, just in case. I hope you learned something useful today about using 850 mode on the TBM. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button on your way out and subscribe so you don't miss out on the last part where we fly an RNAV approach into a busy international airport.